So you're out on location, pursuing your passion for content creation. You just finished recording a clip. You hit the preview button on the back of the camera to see if the shot is epic or a pile of garbage. The suspense grows. You hit play and, oh yeah, you crushed it. You can't wait to show your mom, maybe even your grandma. Heck, even Peter McKinnon would be proud. What a day to be alive. Now, I don't know about you, but that overly dramatized depiction of loving the shot that you just captured, it's what I live for. Problem is, it doesn't always happen. Sometimes the lighting is bad, we shook the camera and ruined everything. Sometimes the subject matter we're filming is just straight garbage. Or the lens just isn't the best complement for the scene. It sucks, but that's just how it is. Not every shot can be amazing. With that being said though, I was recently on a long multi-day shoot where I could not stop using this one lens. I felt like every time I pointed my camera at something and hit record, it almost didn't matter what I was filming, the shots just looked great. To the point where I've almost been going out of my way to exclusively film on this lens. So without any further ado, if you're in the market for a new lens, which let's be real, who isn't, I'm gonna spend the rest of this video explaining why I think you should go with the Sigma 85 millimeter F1. 1.4 lens. What's up creators? My name is Anthony Gallo from the team at contentcreator.com. And like I said a minute ago, I have been using this lens basically nonstop for the past few months. When I initially ordered the a7S 3 last fall, I got the Sigma 85 millimeter and the Sigma 24 to 70 millimeter. Quickly, I found myself defaulting to the 24 to 70 because historically that's just my go-to for basically all types of filming. I took a few test clips with the 85 millimeter, but that was really it. I love the image it produced, but I didn't really see a ton of application for most of the content I was shooting for work. Eventually though, I pulled it out at one of my client shoots and I remember being blown away comparing the footage shot on the 24 to 70 to the footage from the 85 millimeter. It took what was in my eyes a somewhat mundane shot of a girl running on a treadmill and turned it into something that just looked so smooth and clean. Fast forward a few months and we get hired for a huge commercial shoot with a luxury resort in Cape Cod. We had a decent sized crew, but primarily we used just two main cameras. And you can bet that I had the 85 millimeter strapped to my a7S III for the entire eight day shoot. It was honestly comical how we all reacted whenever we watched over the clip shot on the 85. We'd all freak out and then just kind of shrug and say, ah, oh, it's the 85, man, it's butter. So with the background on how I came to find myself loving the 85 millimeter now out of the way, let me dive into the seven specific reasons why this has climbed so high on my list of favorite gear. The first reason is what I like to call the difference factor. And let me explain. If you think about the content that we see basically nonstop all day, every day on social media and just in our pockets in general, it's smartphone content shot on relatively wide angle lenses. We see it so often that our brains start to ignore the pattern and we need to see crazy cell phone footage for it to really stand out whatsoever. I'll never forget when I first picked up a camera with the zoom lens. All I wanted to do was just go to the highest focal length possible and shoot whatever I could. The scene compression that we get at higher focal lengths, the dreamy background blur and depth of field, these are all elements in an image that we just don't see quite as often, so it's harder for our brains to ignore them. Now I know cell phones, and in particular the iPhone, have introduced the portrait mode and now cinematic mode, which kind of adds the same depth of field, but it's still just really new to most people's eyes. And now the 85 millimeter is the perfect example of how eye stopping this difference factor really is. You can basically point this lens at anything and you'll see it from a perspective that you've really never seen it from, making the shots stand out in your brain because it just can't ignore the pattern. Just shooting some of the breakfast scenes for the resort, I found myself drooling over how good the shots looked, despite the fact that it's really just a couple sitting at a table eating food together. Now this brings me to my second reason, which is bokeh or background blur. This lens has a long focal length and a fast aperture at f1.4. Put these two factors together and you get some serious background blur. Now, if you're wondering how it compares to the amount of background blur on the 24 to 70, here are two shots stacked next to each other. 24 to 70 all the way zoomed in on the left compared to the 85 millimeter on the right. There are obviously two different focal lengths, but the difference in background blur just adds such an X factor to the quality of the shots. For some reason, the word we just kept using to describe it was butter. 
The bokeh makes the shots just look so smooth and so dreamy, no matter what you're really filming. Up next, we have the versatility. Now, I know what you're thinking, Anthony, if you want versatility, use a variable zoom, like the 24 to 70 or the 16 to 35, not a prime lens. But hear me out, this lens is actually extremely versatile. First off, the detail shots with this lens are phenomenal, allowing the viewer to focus intently on just one subject due to the background blur, not to mention they're freaking sharp. You can also easily capture solid medium shots of small groups or just a single person. Then finally, we also have spectacular long shots where our subjects' full bodies are shown while keeping that scene compression looking beautiful. And here's a great example of just how valuable that is. With the resort shoot, every time we had the pool area reserved for just filming, the weather seemed terrible. It was either cloudy, raining, it was useless. So eventually, we were forced to film during peak hours where tons of guests were still at the pool. The 85 millimeter focal length allowed me to film full body shots of our talent while keeping practically everyone else out of the frame. And then the background blur, due to the low aperture, made sure that even if someone was in the frame, it wasn't really distracting because they were so blurry. I found that if I was creative enough and willing to move my body in order to get the shots, I could cover a full spread of angles, all with the same lens, helping to maintain that dream vacation feel we were aiming to get with these commercials. Now, quick pause in the video here. I just wanted to thank you for watching this far. And if you are finding the content valuable, can you like this video and subscribe to our channel as it really does help with the YouTube algorithm. Them. Moving on though, reason number four, I think 85 millimeters is one of the longest focal lengths that you can still use handheld and my goodness do they look good. Personally, I really enjoy filming handheld. It gives a super organic feel to the video, almost as if the viewer is in the scene with the subjects, drawing them into the action. The issue though, as your focal length increases, the bumps and the micro shakes become more and more evident to the point where it's just too much. For example, I would never go handheld at 200 millimeters on my 70 to 200 that I have. Even with the image stabilization, it just wouldn't be able to hold it steady. The 85 millimeter paired with a little in-body image stabilization from the A7S III, sprinkle in a little warp stabilization and maybe even add some slow motion and the handheld shots look amazing. So great that I found myself filming almost exclusively handheld on the 85 for the entire week long shoot. Considering our second camera was a 16 to 35 mounted on a Ronin, I felt like the shots paired together nicely and broke up the pacing so it's not just a constant stream of perfectly smooth wide shots or all tight and handheld. Okay, reason number five is the autofocus. With their newest round of cameras, I think Sony has finally reached the top tier level for autofocus. And the last thing I'd wanna do is slap a lens on there that doesn't take full advantage of that autofocus. Despite the fact that this lens is made by Sigma and not Sony, the autofocus is still amazing. I found that no matter what type of scene we were shooting, I could always count on the autofocus to nail whatever creative vision I had in mind. Whether that was just tracking faces throughout a scene as they moved closer or farther from the camera, or dynamically switching between subjects using spot focus or just simply tapping on the screen, it was a breeze using this camera and lens combo. Everything just felt super reliable. All right, reason number six why I love this lens is the low light. Being able to open things all the way down to f1.4 means we can let a ton of light into the camera. With the resort shoot, this allowed us to capture twilight and nighttime scenes with zero professional lighting, aside from fire pits, candles, and a few other practical sources. Then finally, coming in at number seven is build quality. If you've ever owned a Sigma lens, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. Ever since they started to come out with their art series of lenses, I felt that Sigma has rivaled the quality of both Canon and Sony's native lenses. They feel great in the hand, the focus ring is smooth and uninterrupted, not to mention the weather ceiling is great. I was actually just in Iceland on a job using this camera in the pouring rain and underneath waterfalls, and I didn't have to worry for a second about water damaging the lens or my camera. And that does it, a comprehensive guide as to why I love this lens. And I actually do have one quick bonus reason, we can call it number eight. I love how affordable this lens is compared to the native Sony G Master lenses. It's literally $600 cheaper for what is in my eyes the same exact quality. But now that you know why I love this lens, let's dive into who I think this lens is for. I would say one of the most common questions I get asked is what lens should I buy? Which in itself is basically an impossible question to answer unless I know exactly what you plan on shooting and what you have for lenses already. If you have absolutely nothing and you're looking to buy your first lens, the 85 probably isn't what I would recommend. Instead, I'd recommend a more standard zoom lens like the 24-70 to or the 16-35. to 
And keep in mind, if you have a crop sensor camera like APS-C or Micro Four Thirds, you'd want to accommodate for that crop in that happens due to the smaller sensors. Now, if you already have your standard ranges covered and you're looking for that next piece of equipment that will really help you get a unique look with your content, I think the 85 would be a perfect fit for you. I find myself using it more than practically any of the other prime lenses that I own, and I don't think I've ever owned another lens where almost everything it shoots has me losing my mind over the pure look and kind of cinematic quality of the shots. Not to mention, on top of everything I've already used as a reason why I love this lens, it's also a spectacular portrait photography lens. So if you're a hybrid shooter who does video and photo, just another reason why this might be the perfect lens for you. Okay, but now that we've spent all this time talking about gear, as always, I find myself having to emphasize probably the most beat to death saying in this field of content creation, which is, it's not the gear, it's the filmmaker. You've probably heard it a million times, but from somebody who was unbelievably obsessed with gear at the start of my career, I cannot stress enough how much shifting my focus to skills and practicing those skills leveled up my career 10 times faster than any individual lens or camera ever did. And because of that simple fact, myself and a group of creatives founded contentcreator.com and more specifically our filmmaking course, 14 Day Filmmaker. The purpose of this course is to streamline the learning experience and provide daily practice exercises to get people away from their computer, out of consumption mode, and into creation mode. In the past year, this course has helped over 30,000 people develop their skills in record time, all while being a part of our amazing community. Whether you're trying to shoot better YouTube videos, jumpstart your freelance videographer business, or simply get better at your favorite hobby, the training and practice exercises in this program will take 18 months of learning on your own and streamline it into just 14 days. You get lifetime access to all of the content, the student discounts like 60% off Premiere Pro and After Effects, and lifetime access to our weekly Q&A calls that we host in our community, which help you get your questions answered lightning fast. Not to mention, it's also the most affordable course of its kind, coming in at just $48. If you wanna join over 30,000 people who have already enrolled in the course, it takes just 60 seconds to sign up, and there's a link in the description of this video just for you. That's it though, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found the content valuable. Here's a quick video of a kitten to thank you for doing so. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one.